WYPL TV 18 presents The Power of Sleep, sponsored by Methodist Sleep Disorder Center, offering free community education seminars Tuesday, April 21st, and Tuesday, July 14th at the Jewish Community Center. Each seminar features a physician speaking on an important sleep-related topic. Admission is free. The seminars begin at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, April 21st, and Tuesday, July 14th. More information can be found at www.methodisthealth.org or 901-683-0044. Methodist Healthcare, embracing the miracle of life. everybody and welcome to the power of sleep. I'm your host Susan Gray and our guest today is Dr. Neil Aguilar, director of the Methodist Sleep Disorder Center, sleep medicine specialist and pulmonologist. Thanks for coming Dr. Aguilar. Nice to be here. Well I want to know why we should care about sleep and what got you involved in it. Uh, sleep is essential to normal functioning and it's kind of mysterious. It's something you spend up to a third of your life doing and it's it's something you obviously don't remember and if you don't get good sleep it affects your health and affects the way you perform. Oh and we're going to talk so much about that. Well let's start out talking about what qualifies as good sleep because my, my thinking is that people in the audience think they already know everything about sleep but what is good sleep? Uh, good sleep, the, the, the proof's in the pudding. If you sleep a certain amount and if you get up and if you have energy and you don't feel sleepy, that's good sleep. Mm -hmm. If you spend a certain amount of time in bed and if you don't, if you're not able to perform because of no energy or sleepiness, that's not good sleep. Mm -hmm. There's a thing called sleep hygiene. Don't turn the channel yet. T words like that just drive me crazy, but sleep hygiene is the atmosphere that you're sleeping in. What does that have to do with getting good sleep? Well, sleep hygiene just, uh, hygiene just means habit. Uh, what you do with the place you sleep in uh, what time you go to sleep, what you do before and after sleep will affect how good your sleep is. So he sleep hygiene are going to be the habits that you take up related to sleep. So what is a bad habit before sleep? Uh, a bad habit is going to sleep later than you should. I mean the tendency in your brain with a clock that's inside of your brain is it always wants to go sleep later. And if you follow that cue you end up going to sleep later and later and then you have to get up at a certain time and you end up being in the middle of a good sleep period. Mm -hmm. So when you go to sleep the things that you do before you sleep as far as consumption like any kind of caffeinated products, uh, it's a good habit or a good hygiene. If you're going to exercise try to exercise in the morning because raising your body temperature is really alerting. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of some of the things that you'd want to think Here's about sleep hygiene. Here's one of the sleep hygiene things that's really going to mess them up, and that's that everybody wants to have a glass of alcohol, some kind of wine, a little toddy before they go to sleep. So they have it, and they go to sleep, and then they wake up pretty soon after that. Why is that a bad idea? Well, the, it has to, it's a function of age and timing. Uh, as you get older, your brain changes. It rewires changes. And things you could tolerate when you're younger, you can't tolerate when you get older. Uh, if you do have a toddy, it ought to be at least three or four hours before you go to sleep. Uh, if you have a toddy right before you go to sleep, you're going to go to sleep quicker, but then whenever the effect of the alcohol wears off, you wake up. Rebound. You, you rebound and you end up, I, I've noticed uh, usually it's uh, people when they're approaching or getting into middle age, they can't tolerate anymore and they'll come see me in the sleep lab and that's how you usually have a toddy. It used to be okay, now I'm waking up at night, what's the problem? And I usually tell them either don't have a toddy or back it up and let it be at least three or four hours before you go to sleep. Okay, that's good information, but it will not help your quality of sleep during the night. While we're on the subject of alcohol, when an alcoholic stops drinking, does their sleep return to normal pretty quickly? No. It, it can be an, a year and a half. Uh, one of the reasons for going, one of the reasons for going back to drinking is that you'll have someone who is a habitual drinker, quits drinking, and their sleep's messed up. I can't sleep now at night. And you can have disturbed sleep for up to a year and a half after you quit drinking. And so people in recovery ought to be prepared for that and just know that that's the way it is and give your body plenty of time to to readjust to normal sleep. Right, right. Okay, very good. Well, now we know what good sleep is. How, how about bad sleep? What's, what, uh, well, let's start with daytime sleepiness. 
that's one of the ways that we know that a person hasn't slept well. But I think that people think, uh, yeah, I'm sleepy during the day. What difference does that make? It makes a big difference. It means uh, uh, something is happening when you sleep at night, whether you're cognizant or not. Uh, it's okay to wake up at night. Uh, a minimum number of awakenings is seven. But usually you wake up and you go right back to sleep. And you usually don't remember what happened for five to ten minutes before you go back to sleep. So it's retrograde amnesia. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up and you go back to, right back to sleep, no big deal. But if you wake up and stay awake for a long time, that can be a problem. But just because you wake up at night and go to the bathroom doesn't necessarily mean that you had bad sleep. Uh, but the proof, again, is in the pudding. How do you feel during the day? If you're sleepy, there's something wrong with you. You're either not getting enough sleep or the sleep's poor quality. Well, the word sleepy just kind of puts everybody's alarms, just <coughs> turns those alarms off. And we want to talk about some red flags that can mean that your daytime sleepiness is serious. Uh, things like snoring. People, snoring, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. You go. Uh, snoring in and of itself may not be bad. If you don't snore, you don't have apnea. And we're going to talk about that a lot. So later. the absence of snoring, whenever I interview someone, tells me they don't have a breathing disturbance in their sleep that's disturbing their sleep. But as far as the sleepiness, and sometimes it's hard to tell, am I sleepy? Do I not have any energy? Uh, what, what is the problem? Sleepiness, what we usually use is an F4 sleepiness scale, and it's just some questions you ask people. Do you fall asleep uh, when you're watching TV? Do you fall asleep at traffic lights? Do you fall asleep in front of a computer? Mm. And that backs up to the next question, how much time were you asleep? Uh, mm -hmm. And if an average person ought to get seven hours. If you're getting seven hours and you have those symptoms, something's wrong with your sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, um, being sleepy while driving is not normal. No, that is not normal. It is not at all. And if you fall asleep while you're watching television, say you come in from work and you have your dinner and you sit down to watch television and you immediately fall asleep, People think that's normal. It depends on what you're watching. <laughs> and, um, okay, so that will be on the next show. That's right. Programming. <laughs> but just say that a person does this regularly. Is that normal sleepiness? No, that's abnormal. And people, because they will think, no, I don't have a problem with sleep. I just come in and I get relaxed and I'm full and I fall asleep. But just like you said a minute ago, the brain wants to go to sleep later. So if yours is trying to go to sleep earlier, Mm -hmm. then there that wrong. may be indicative of something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see, here's some other pro memory problems that are not disease or age related. Right, and we will see people often uh, who have that the test out for symptoms of attention deficit disorder or they test out showing early uh, dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, people who have, just, I'm not saying everyone who has ADD and has dementia has a sleep problem, right. but if your sleep is disturbed it can uh, affect your ability to operate, to do problem solving, work with numbers, and just memory in general. Like cognitive things.